Okay, so let's take a couple of look at some of these problems. Now, the first one is going to be um, on probability, and we're on page 730, number 17. And what we have is we have an a veterinarian in a given week, a veterinarian treated the following animals, and there's a table with the animals if you want to look, look on it. Determine the probability that the next animal she treats is a dog, a cat, a rabbit. So we're going to basically look at history to see what the probability of coming up with a dog is, a cat, a bird, and a rabbit is. Okay? So here's the table. So she has her animals listed here. And she has number treated here. Right, and so she has, for animals, she has dog, and for dog, she treated 45, she has cat, and for cat, she treated 40, and for birds, she treated 15. And for rabbits, she treated five. Now I'm going to put another column over here that's not in the book, but I'm going to put total. And the total is going to stand for the total treated. Well, if we add these up, 40 and 5 is 45. Then another 45 gives us 90. And 90 and 15 is 105. So there's a total of 105 animals she treated. Now, part A says, what's the probability that the next animal she treats is a dog? Or if we have enough data here, we can use this um, information to say, what's the probability that she treats a dog in general? Well, she treated 105 animals. And out of the 105 animals, 45 were dogs. So the probability that she treats a dog is, well, 45 dogs out of 105 animals. And we can reduce that. Um, 45 divided by 5, by 5 is 9. And 45 and 105 divided by 5, well... Let's see, um, a hundred, 5 times uh, 20 is 100, so 5 times 21 is going to be 105. So if I divide 45 by 5, I get 9. If I divide 105 by 5, I get 21. Well, I notice that 9 is divisible by 3, and 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 21 divided by 3 is 7. So the probability is there's a seven-thirds chance that the next animal she treats is a dog. Now part B asks, what's the probability that the next animal she treats is a cat? Well, just based on empirical probabilities or just historical evidence, you could say, is how we treat this. If our data size is um, large enough and, um, and unbiased and other other things, which we'll actually talk more about in chapter 13. Because when we talk about empirical probabilities, we're really gathering statistics. Okay? So, for B, we want to look at the probability of getting a cat. Well, there are 40 cats out of a total of 105. And 40 divided by 5 is 8. 105 divided by 5 as above is 21. So I just divided the numerator by 5 and the denominator by 5. 4 divided by 5 is 8. 105 divided by 5 is 21. And let's see, 7 times 3 is 21. The number of those numbers um, are divisible into 8. So that's the most we can reduce it. And there's an 8 out of 21 chance. If you want, you can do 8 divided by 21 and write it out as a decimal. And part C is, what's the probability of drawing a rabbit? Well, 
Well, there are five rabbits out of 105. Five divided by five is one. And 105 divided by five is 21 as above. So there's a one out of 21 chance. So we have this. Now, if you want to see what these are as decimals, I mean, that'll give you an idea of what they are as percentages. So I can just pull up Excel. I think I hit Excel, didn't I? Okay, there we go. I'm not it. Here it comes. So I'm just going to type dog, cat, and rabbit now dog I'm gonna hit equal sign so it does a calculation now remember for the dog we said it was 3 over 7 or 3 divided by 7 which is a 42 percent chance if I want to see the percentages I can just multiply by 100 and there's a 42 percent 43 percent chance it's a dog I'll hit equals again and for the cat, we said it was an 8 out of 21 chance. So I'll do 8 divided by 21 times 100. Now, the 100 is being multiplied by the 8. This is the way um, it does order of operations. If you're unsure how it works, you could always put parentheses to make sure it does 8 divided by 21 times 100. They don't have to. We see that's a, about a 38% chance. And for the rabbit, we saw it hit equals. And we do 1 divided by 21 and multiply by 100 and we get 4.76 about a 5% chance and okay and that was number 17 now the next one was going to be 29 um 29 same leave that one for you um but it's pretty much the same it's it's longer because it gives you an introduction a lot of the information you don't need just pay attention to the total numbers um, the 705 uh, and the 224 in the problem are going to sum to give you your total, like we have over here. And you're just going to look at the ratios over the total for your problem. So just kind of look at that, and I think that should work out okay for you. Now let's see here. Um, now the next one we're going to go to is we're going to look at section 12.2. Okay. And that's on page, these problems are on page 738. Okay. So I'm looking at number 15 on page 738. And it says, in a raffle, okay, it says, in a raffle where one number is chosen, determine the probability that you would win if you have a choice of three numbers to choose from. Experience. Okay, so to the last one, except here we're working with theoretical probability. So, in a raffle where one number is chosen, so determine the probability that you would win if you have a choice of 40 numbers to choose from. So, it's kind of like a lottery. Okay, you get to choose uh, one number is going to be drawn. So you might want to ask a question. Well, how many numbers do you get to pick in this raffle? Like if you guys have ever been to like sometimes a charity thing, you can buy lots of raffle tickets. Well, in this one, you you got to we'll assume that you can't buy more than one ticket or whatever is going on. Okay, so you get you get to pick one number. You get to fill in one number, and um, one this number is going to be drawn okay or if you play like the lottery you can buy a bunch of tickets now since there's only 40 numbers possible to choose from we're going to assume you can't get more than one ticket so there's 40 tickets you have one ticket what's the probability that you win well it's going to be one out of 40 and um, I'm not going to write that one out I, I think it's clear if not send me a message I'm more than happy to go over it Sometimes I think something's clear and, you know, could not be. And the next problem we had here, that was number 15. Look at number 43. 
Now for number 43, it says, talks about traffic light. In exercises 43 to 46, the traffic light is red for 25 seconds, yellow for 5 seconds, green for 55 seconds. What is the probability um, that you reach the light, um, that the light is green? Okay, so this is kind of like the empirical probability question, right? So basically what we're just calculating is what percentage of the time is the, um, is the light yellow, what percentage of the light green, and what percentage of the time is it red? Now, if it's anything like the lights around where I live, it's pretty much just red all the time. You just kind of sit there and do whatever, I guess. Um, okay, so let's look at this. Problem number 43 on page 739. And we're looking at a traffic light. And we know that the, the light is red for 25 seconds. This is a short light. It's yellow for five seconds. And it's green for 55 seconds. Now this is going to be exactly like um, the problem we did on section 12.1, except here it's theoretical because we're not collecting data by watching the lights. We know that this is the actual sequence of events that take place. Um, it's green 55, then it turns to yellow for 5, then it's red for 25, and starts over again. So this is not just observed data making guesses like we were in 12.1, this is actually what happens. So, the total time that it takes to cycle through all these events is going to be 55 and 5 is 60. Uh, 60 and 25 is a total of 85 seconds. Now, of that 85 seconds, we know that it's green for a total of 55 seconds. Okay, so we're really asking what is the likelihood that when we get to the light it's green, we're asking, well, what proportion of the time is it green in the first place? So the probability that the light is green when we get to it is just going to be 55 divided by 85. Okay, well, 55 divided by 5 is 11. And let's see, and what about 85 divided by 5? Well, um, 5 goes into 8 one time. Uh, subtract 1, we have, let's see, 3 we bring down, uh, let's see here. So 55 times, uh, let's see, 11. And what's 85, what's 85 minus 55? Well, that's 30. And um, let's see, 5, uh, uh, to get 30, we need 6 fives. So it's going to be 11 plus 6 is 17. So that's going to be 11 over 17, right? Did I do that correctly? I think so. That's right. Okay, that's right. It is 17. So I just divided, I know 55 and 85 are both divisible by 5 because they end in 5, and I know that 11 times 5 is 55, and if you didn't see how I, how I did this division out, you can do it in the calculator, that's fine. So the probability is 11 over 17. Now if I want to convert that into a percentage, since probabilities are usually done as percentages, I can just open up Excel again or do it in your calculator. And I'll do G over here. Now in the column next to it, I want to do a calculation, so I'll type equals. And I'll type 11 divided by 17. About 65%. If I want to write it as a percentage out of 100, I can just multiply by 100. And it's 64.7%. So I'll just pull this back over here.
and this is equal to 64.7%. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do another one. So let's come back over here. And that was um, number 43. Let's look at section 12.3. And that's on page 746 if you want to turn there. And we'll look at problem, let's see, number 11. Well, I'll save number 11 for you guys. Um, look at number 17, a deck of cards. In exercises 17 through 20, a card is picked from a standard deck of cards. Determine the odds against and the odds of favor of selecting a queen a heart, um, a picture card. Okay, so let's, uh, so let's look at this. So we're going to do the odds in favor and the odds against. All right, so we have a queen. Now we have a standard deck of cards. So in a standard deck of cards, There are 52 cards, right? If you ever want to ask if someone, if someone ever asks you to play 52 card pickup, means they're going to throw all the cards on the floor. And you have to pick all 52 cards up, so you should say no, right? Okay. So how many queens are in the deck? Okay. Well, the number of queens in the deck is four. There's a queen of hearts, a queen of spades, a queen of diamonds, and a queen of clubs. So there's four queens. So the probability of getting a queen, all things being equal, is going to be four queens out of 52. The probability of not drawing a queen, and for not, I'm just going to put a little squiggly line over here, the probability of not getting a queen is going to be 52 minus 4 over 52. Why 52 minus 4 is because, well, 4 of the 52 are queens, so 52 minus the 4, uh, which is going to be 48, are not queens. So the probability of not getting a queen is... 42 out of 50, 48 out of 52. Okay. So what are the odds against getting a queen? So what are the odds against? So I'm going to put OA for odds against getting a queen. And that's going to be the probability that you don't get a queen divided by the probability that you do get a queen. So it's going to be 48 out of 52, which is the probability you don't get a queen, divided by 4 over 52. Now, it looks like a complicated fraction, but the numerator and denominator of this big fraction both have a 52 in common, so I can actually cancel those out. And you'll be able to do that with all the problems if it's confusing why. We can cancel those out. And this will be equal to 48 divided by 4, which, if we divide top and bottom by 2, is going to be 24 out of 2, which is going to be equal to 12 out of 1. So the odds ratio against, I would write as 12 colon 1. Now, the odds ratio, or what this means, is for, for every 12 <coughs> times that I don't get a queen, I, for, there will be one time where I do get a queen. Or if I draw 13 cards... Um, 12 are, the odds are that 12 will not be a queen and 1 will be a queen for every 13 cards I draw, right? 
So it gives me a total of 13 draws, right? 12 and 1 is 13. I expect 12 not to be queen and 1 to be a queen. Or that's what would happen on average at least. And I'll also notice that if I simplify this over here, uh, what do I get? Well, if I divide the bottom by 4, I get a 13. And if I divide the top by 4, I get a 12. If I just simplify the, um, the probability of not getting a queen. And if I simplify this over here, notice I'm going to get 1 out of 13. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 15 divided by 4 is, 52 divided by 4 is 13. Right? So you'll notice that the numerator for getting a queen is a 1, the same as this number over here, and the numerator for not getting the queen is a 12, which is this number over here, and the sum of 1 plus 12 is 13, which is this number over here. It's also this number here. Okay. Now, this is the odds against getting a queen. What are the odds for getting a queen? Well, the odds for a queen, I'll put OF for odds for, is the opposite of 12 to 1, which is just 1 to 12. We just flipped it. Okay. Um, so I, I hope that cleared things up with that problem. And, okay. So I'm going to go into section 12.4, and that's on page 756. And on page 756, let's see, where, what are some good problems here? All right, let's take look at number 17 on page 756. It says, the problems list says investment club. And it says the Triple L Investment Club is considering purchasing a certain stock. After considerable research, the club members determine that there is a 60% chance of making $1,000, a 10% chance of breaking even, and a 30% chance of losing 7200 7, Determine the expectation of this purchase. Okay. Now, if you've read the section on this, what you'll note is that the expectation for a finite number of events is just going to be the probability of the expectation times the value of events. So if we read problem number 17 on page 756, we know that there's a 60% chance that we make $10,000. Sounds good. I like that. There is a 10% chance that we make, that we break even, that we make nothing. Ten percent chance our earnings are zero. And a thirty percent chance of losing seven thousand two hundred. Right. It looks like what we hear. Look. It looks like what happened here is we had to put up seven thousand two hundred. Now, because we're losing, I'll put a negative in front of that. Right. Because it's a negative earning or a loss. So sixty percent chance we get ten thousand. Ten percent chance we get nothing. Thirty percent chance we lose seven thousand two hundred. It looks like we had to put up seven thousand two hundred dollars, and we can get. Um, possibly ten thousand um, uh, dollars from the investment. So that means we're putting up seven thousand two hundred to earn two thousand to earn a potential two thousand eight hundred dollars. Uh, ten percent chance we just get our money back, and there's a thirty percent chance that we get nothing back. I'm sorry that we lose that we lose our investment. Okay, so what's the expected earning? Well, I'm going to put E for the expected earning is, well, there's a 60% chance. Well, 60 
really just means 60% means 60 divided by 100, or just, which would be 0.6. You could also just put 0.6 for 60%, times the value of the event, which is 10,000, plus 10 over 100, which that's how you write 10% down, times 0, which is the value of the event, plus 30 over 100 times negative 7,200. All right, so let's do this. Well, you can do 60 times 10,000 divided by 100 in your calculator, or you can cancel the two zeros with the two zeros, and you're going to have a 6 with three zeros. That's one, two, three. Plus anything times zero is zero, so I need to put that. And I have a positive times a negative, so it's going to be a negative, so I'm just going to put uh, 6,000 minus. Now the two zeros cancel with the two zeros, and I just have 30 times um, negative 72, so it's going to be a negative number. And 3 times, okay, so 3 times 7 is, uh, 7 times 3 is 21. Um, so uh, that's 210 plus 6. Um, that's 216 um, times 10. And it's going to be negative. Okay, so we have this. So that's going to be 2,160. So we're going to subtract these two numbers. Let's, let's do it this way. So that gives me a 0. That gives me a 4. That gives me an 8. And this gives me a 3. Okay, so that's good. It means that we have a, a net earning of $3,840 expected. So the expected value, if we go through with this, we're expecting. Now, this is the type of investment that, say, an insurance company or something might make, or data that, not make, that the data they would look at. Why? Because expected value really doesn't mean anything unless you do something over and over and over again. It's what you expect on average. So if you do this investment once, it's a gamble. It really doesn't tell you anything. If you re-enter into this investment over a long period of time or constantly make it, it's just a consistent thing, on average, you should expect to come up with this earning. If you do it once, the expected value doesn't really tell you anything, right? Um, when you buy a lotto ticket, it's a gamble if you do it once here or there. But for, say, the, um, the, the um, whoever um, is running the, uh, the lotto numbers, uh, who's ever doing those statistics and things like that, what he's doing is he's looking at the government just continually re-entering into the investment so they can calculate their expected earnings and things like that. Okay, so that's the last problem I'm going to do for now. Uh, I hope this was a help. Please give me feedback on the video. I'd love to hear from you. And I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.